When Albert Einstein was asked what he would do if he had one hour to solve a problem upon which his life depended, he said he'd spend the first 55 minutes getting the question right because he said if he got the question right, he could answer any problem in less than five minutes. Good questions or the right questions open up answers that have been laying there all this time, but we couldn't reach them until somebody gave us the question. So we've started to look today at the questions Jesus asked us, thinking that if we could learn a few of them, we could use them in conversations at work or in the, room, in the dorm rooms or in the locker rooms. And those questions might bring people to places inside of them that they can't reach until we ask the question. The first one was a question Jesus asked in John chapter 1. What do you want? What are you looking for? What are you seeking? What is the center of your search? It's a powerful question placed as it is at the beginning of our Christian lives because the thing that we're searching for determines the launch and the launch determines the trajectory. So one question to ask people that you're working with is what do you want? You can't start there, but somewhere in the conversation when they come to you with all sorts of frenetic activity and all kinds of problems where this person or that thing got in the way, take a breath, give them room, and then just say, what do you want? Well, they'll fill the room with all kinds of wants, but keep pressing it. Say, but, but aren't all of those things really just symptoms of a deeper search that maybe you haven't put your finger on yet. When Jesus asks, what do you want? He presumes that he himself is the answer. You don't even know Jesus is what you want until you find him. And then once you find him and pursue him with all of your heart, all of these other things that you've been chasing fall beautifully into place. So today we identified three kinds of people, those who still don't know what they're looking for. They're searching for something, anything, and they want more of it, only it never satisfies them. Then there are those who still aren't looking for what they found, this is the vast majority of religious people, and you work with them too, and they'll talk about their testimony or their day when they came to Jesus, but you notice in conversations that whenever his name comes up, there isn't a fire in their eyes, there's not enthusiasm in their voice. No, that's saved for other subjects. So even though they found him, they're not looking for him. They think they already have him. Then there are some who have found him and they keep looking. These are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness. Tozer said to have found God and yet to pursue him is a soul's paradox of love. So at work tomorrow, when you run into people in the first category, they still haven't found what they're looking for, ask them what kind of life is worth wanting. If you run into religious people tomorrow and they've found them, but they're still not looking, ask them, why do you choose to remain Christian? And if you run into people, a few of them, who are in that last category, they have found him. And when his name comes up, there is a fire in their eyes and there's a hunger and a thirst in their heart. Ask them, what is it about him that you most want for yourself? You can be the link between that person and Jesus Christ. You could be the person in your office and in your boardroom and in your workrooms that prompts them to take the next step. Wouldn't that be amazing? God is wanting to use you right there in the place where you work. This week as I pray, I'll pray with that question, what do you want in mind? And I'll pray that you can do exactly that. 
move your people forward.